Hi everyone, my name is Steffi Brown and I am the co-administrator for the Ankylosing Spondylitis Project. I decided to do this vlog to kind of tell my story and so that people could get to know me a little bit better. I live on the west coast of Ireland with my beautiful wife, our dog and our two cats. I love reading, um, I adore crocheting, I really enjoy cooking and I've got ankylosing spondylitis. My path to diagnosis started when I was 20. Um, I was getting a lot of pain in my sacroiliac joint, in my left sacroiliac. At the same time, I also had a cyst and I assumed that the pain was related to the cyst. So my cyst burst in January 2011 and the pain in my sacroiliac joint continued. Uh, about six months later, I went to my GP and I was diagnosed with hip bursitis. I was put on a course of anti-inflammatories and painkillers and unfortunately they didn't work. So I went back to my GP and they sent off referrals to um, rheumatology, orthopedics. I was sent in a referral for physiotherapy and basically, you know, they, they couldn't do an awful lot because they didn't know what was wrong with me. Luckily, I had a fantastic GP who always believed me, always understood that I was going through pain. I never had a problem with her and honestly, I don't know how I would have coped had I not had an understanding GP. Um, this continued on for several months. Um, I was on painkillers, I was on tramadol, Exprim, the whole lot. Uh, you know, people with ankylosing spondylitis will tell you it's just a whole cocktail of different things that the doctors try and generally they don't work. Um, after about another six to eight months, um, I still hadn't heard anything from any of the, the teams, so I went back to my GP and saw a locum. Um, and he was actually the first person to mention ankylosing spondylitis and that he thought that it could definitely be a possibility for me. So he suggested that I pay privately for MRIs, which I did. We paid over a thousand euro for MRIs of my spine, my hips, my sacroiliac joints. And the only thing it really showed up was that I had sacroiliitis. Again, the pain was continuing. It was continuing to get slightly worse. Um, I was walking pretty much everywhere at the time because we didn't have a car. We'd be doing our shopping and I would get halfway home and have to stop because I felt like my sacred relic joint was unstable. That's the only way I can really describe it is that I couldn't put weight on it. So that kind of continued on, like I said, for, for a couple of years actually. Um, we then got a car, luckily, and I didn't have to walk everywhere. My pain continued and slowly the meds were being upped. We were ringing the rheumatologist and found out actually at the beginning um, when I was first referred that there was about a four year waiting list. Um, in August 2013, so that was sort of nearly three years after I got my initial symptoms, I actually fell. I lost power down one leg, fell and couldn't, you know, was very scared. Um, at the time I was working as a nurse on an oncology ward and all I kept thinking was if I had fallen with a patient, I would have taken the patient down with me. I realized pretty quickly that I was unsafe to work as a nurse. So straight away I took myself off of the ward um, and decided that you know, until I found a reason for what was going on, I wasn't happy to, to continue to work. I had been doing physiotherapy for several months and it didn't seem to be helping. I'd had several blood tests and the doctor knew, that, or my GP knew, that my inflammatory markers were up, they were continuing to go up. She sent this through to rheumatology, to orthopaedics, to all the people I'd been referred to, and still no word. So a little while after I took myself out of work, um, we had a fantastic um, system for student nurses where called, you know, they're called CPCs and they were amazing, they were very supportive. Um, they were actually the ones that managed to get me into rheumatology and to get me my first initial appointment because they basically rang up and said this girl needs to be seen and she needs to be seen soon. 
So in September 2013, I saw my rheumatologist for the first time and was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Even though I had no symptoms of fibromyalgia, my pain was always very specific. I was tired because I was in constant pain, but other than that, I had no other symptoms. So he decided to send me for an isotope bone scan, um, and we went back for the results of that in December 2013, and that's when I was told I had ankylosing spondylitis. For me, it was a crushing blow, I'm going to be honest. Um, I had worked with someone whose husband had ankylosing spondylitis, and you know she'd pretty much terrified me about the condition. I'd tried to be remain positive, and with the fibro diagnosis, I'd, I'd kind of accepted that. Um, but then to be told I had AS on top, and there was really nothing they could do for me, that, that was pretty hard. I was, that was the first time Humira was suggested to me and it was kind of packaged as the miracle drug. The miracle drug that would give me my life back and it would be perfect and, and all this type of thing. So I decided to go on to that. In hindsight, I wish that I had had a bit of more time to research and really thought about it. But for me, my, I was still reeling from my diagnosis. At that time, again, I was on a whole host of painkillers, a whole host of anti-inflammatories. I decided to come off of all of my painkillers and all of my anti-inflammatories before going on Humira because I kind of felt that I wouldn't know if Humira was well working or if it was the painkillers. So in January 2014, I started on Humira. Within a couple of weeks, I didn't feel any different. In fact, my pain and my stiffness was getting a lot worse. Um, I was in a pretty bad place mentally. I wasn't coping with my diagnosis. I was having a lot of trouble from family and friends because I wasn't working and they didn't really understand that. Um, I was very lucky. My wife was extremely supportive. You know, in the end, my mum accepted my diagnosis as well and was very supportive. But I really didn't have a huge support system at that time. So I was on Humira and after uh, about six weeks I had a blood test and it showed that my liver function tests were going off. I had another blood test about two weeks later and it showed that they'd got worse. And I decided that I wasn't going to continue with Humira. It, I'd been on it about four months at this stage. I just didn't feel that it was doing having any benefit for me. I didn't feel like I wanted to have liver damage because of this. So that was that was my decision and since then I have been being completely medication free. Saying that I also haven't worked in that time. I don't know how if I would cope with working and having ankylosing spondylitis and not having any medication. I probably wouldn't, I'm going to be honest. For me I don't feel like I want to go back onto medication yet until I really feel I need to. It's a very personal decision and you know I don't feel that medication is bad. In fact, I feel like medication is great for the people that need it. I just don't feel like I'm quite there yet. In around about April or May 2014, I had to go to um, a counsellor, a counselling service. And she was amazing. At the time, I was very down. I was very depressed. The miracle drug that my rheumatologist had kind of said to me was going to work and was going to make my life all better hadn't. Um, and I was I was in a pretty rough place. Um, I was pretty down, and I just wasn't coping very well. And I can honestly say that I think that she saved my life. She was a friend of mine before this. Um, and she's just an amazing woman. I I couldn't. I I just don't know where I'd be without her. And it took me sort of a couple of months of talking to her weekly and really trying to help myself before I realised that I could do this. That I could have a life with ankles and spondylitis. That my life wasn't over. I started to realise that I could live with this. It wasn't something that was going to control me, um, and, and things started to started to improve. I'm not saying I still don't have rough days. I do. I'm not saying that I don't find it hard because I do. 
but I find it manageable. For me, with the AS project, that's my main goal, is to help other people manage this disease. There's no cure at the moment. We're hoping there will be, but there's no guarantees. I want to help people manage their disease. I want to advocate for them. I want to help them get the best care possible. We've all had horrific, uh, you know, times, and we've all had a lot of trouble getting our diagnosis and getting doctors to believe us and realizing that this isn't in our heads. I mean, I, I can't. I've lost count of the amount of times that people have said to me, are you sure it's not in your head? To the point where I was thinking it was all in my head before my diagnosis. Since my diagnosis and since coming off of Humira, I have seen my rheumatologist once. He packaged the Humira as a miracle drug and once I decided to come off of it, I think he just completely lost interest in me. Since then, I've only seen his SHOs and his interns. I kind of feel very let down by him. Um, I'm sure if you talk to him, he'd have a different point of view on this. He, I saw him briefly once. I went in after I'd had a flare, and he, I was talking to the intern, and he, the intern went to talk to him, and he came in very cocksure, very arrogant, and tried to force me to go back on Humira and said, even if you only go on for a little while, it will help you. I turned around and said last time it didn't help me, it didn't solve anything, I was still very sore, I was still very stiff, and it knocked my liver function tests off, but he just didn't listen. So in the end, he walked out of the room, and I just turned around to the intern and said, please don't write the prescription for it, because I won't fill the prescription. That, for me, he was probably the worst experience um, with the healthcare system. Like I said before, my GP was fantastic. I have an amazing nurse in my GP surgery that does all my blood tests. She has also been very supportive. It took me four and a half years to get an appointment with the pain specialists. By this stage, I'd learned how to manage it myself. Um, they gave me lidocaine patches and capsicum cream because I said I did not want anything systemic. Myself and my wife would like to have a family and I don't want to take anything that could potentially harm my unborn baby. Again, it's a very personal choice. I'm not saying that's the right decision for everyone. That's just something that I feel I needed to do. Um, again, because it took me four and a half years, I, I just think it's a ridiculous amount of time to wait for someone to help. You know, I needed that help a long time before I actually got it. The, I can't say that I didn't feel supported by the pain specialist. I did. I only saw him once. I'm on the books if I need to go back. And to be honest, at the moment, I don't feel I do. Um, so that that's pretty much my road to diagnosis. Where am I at the moment? I'm looking to get a job. And I'm absolutely terrified at that prospect. I'm terrified at the idea of having to get up every day and go to work when I might not be able to. I'm terrified at the idea of not being able to get the help because at the moment I'm on something called a medical card which means that all of my GP visits are free. I get reduced costs on my prescriptions. If I start to work that will go. I will have to pay a lot of money for my prescriptions and for my medical care and there's a very good chance I won't be able to afford to go to my GP. There's a very good chance I won't be able to afford my medications. And that for me is terrifying, absolutely terrifying. That's not me saying I don't want to work. I really do want to work. I think majority of us want to work. It's just finding a job that we're actually able to do. It's, it's very difficult for me to say if I will be able to, because I don't know. I really don't know if I'm going to be able to. I'm a very stubborn person, so I'd like to think I will. I can't imagine not working for the rest of my life. So that's, yeah, that's pretty much me at the moment. Um, we are hoping to do a series of different things on ankylosing spondylitis and our experience. So anything that I haven't said now, I will probably say in a later vlog. Um, we will put a link down the bottom to our Facebook page and to our website if you'd like to check that out. 
and if you've got any comments or suggestions on further vlogs, we'd be very happy to hear them. Thank you very much for listening.